Oh, I never realised how many butterflies I could get into my stomach. Just discovered that. OK, here we go. Thank you, everybody. I thought I might get a laugh there, didn't work. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I'd just like to start by saying thank you for joining us here at the Troxy Theatre to celebrate the Landscape Institute's annual awards in its 90th anniversary. And a special hello, hang on, whoa, whoa, you can clap in a minute. Special hello to all those tuning in around the world that are watching online. Yes, we've gone digital. So hello world, now you can clap. There's been some fantastic highlights throughout our 90th anniversary year and many a result of new collaborations which have created new friendships too. You'll have hopefully seen the collaboration, as Dan pointed out, with myself, Andre Davis, and Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge. Together, we designed the RHS Back to Nature Garden at RHS Chelsea and RHS Hampton, and recently completed two permanent gardens with the Duchess, one at RHS Wisley with Ben, who's over there, Ben Brace, and the other for the NHS Trust down in Devon. Yes, UK landscape architecture went global, and we even appeared in Hello Magazine. Who would have thought that? Well, I say appeared, here it comes, I say appeared in Hello. Ready? They photoshopped me out. Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. And Andre has the most famous back of headshots in the world. <laughs> there you go. So it was at RHS Chelsea that Landscape Institute was founded back in May 1929. And 90 years on, nine of our members, many here today, were at Chelsea this year. Sarah Ebley's resilience garden was one that really stood out for me. Google it if you've not seen it. Showcasing how we can protect our woodlands, forests, against climate change and increasing threats from pests and diseases. There are some other gardens this year that have just been announced. That's brilliant. We've got members back there again. Grant Associates, Hugo Bug and Charlotte Harris, uh, Joe Perkins. It's really exciting, all looking to tackle the issue around climate change. Now, 50 years ago, that's what this is doing, 50 years ago, Scottish landscape architect Ian Mahag revolutionised how designers and planners think about ecology, promoting collaboration and shifting the focus from the aesthetic towards a more large-scale ecological approach. His legacy matters now more than ever. If you've not seen the book, get a copy. I had the honor of opening the 50th anniversary celebration of the book, Design for Nature, at the Edinburgh School of Art earlier in the year with the Landscape Institute Scotland. The evening also included a launch of a new book, Design for Nature Now, with an introduction from my dear friend, Professor Brian Evans. Continuing the collaboration theme, the Landscape Institute has worked with the Society of Garden Designers, Bali, and the APL, who are all here today, to create the new Landscape Consultants Biosecurity Toolkit. Thank you for being involved, and a special thank you to Barcham Trees and to Kew Gardens for hosting the first training day on this subject. There'll be more to come next year. Now, in June, as Dan mentioned, we announced the Climate Crisis and Biodiversity Emergency Declaration something so important to me and the Board of Trustees, and I know all of you in this room. It includes short, medium, and long-term goals, and I'll share a little bit more about that later on. I got to attend the IFLA World Congress in Oslo in Norway with Reina back in September, and then to the World's Urban Park Summit in Kazan, Russia. How many people know where Kazan is in Russia? Put a hand up if you know where it is. Yeah, the Russian in the room knows. Thank you. And I'm delighted to say that our declaration and the associated actions have now been adopted on a global scale. The International Federation of Landscape Architects are looking to the UK for guidance. It's a very, very special moment. Now, a wise man once said, if children and young people don't understand nature, they won't appreciate it. And if they don't appreciate it, they won't protect it. And if they don't protect it, who will? Now, I wonder who that man might have been. <laughs> this is why I'm delighted to continue our support and my involvement in the RHS Green Planet Initiative. For those who don't know about Green Planet, it's a student-led project that encourages teenagers to discover the wonderful world of plants and rethink the role of green spaces. The initiative supports our own campaign to choose landscape, which, as you all know, I'm a huge champion of, and I am delighted to say that it's now active in over 20 countries around the world. It's really, really taken off. And I'd, only last week, we welcomed our youngest ever Choose Landscape ambassador, 
little Sophie Fern McDermott from Yorkshire. Here she comes. There she is. I don't think she's here. So today we are here to celebrate the value landscape plays in connecting people, place, and nature. To celebrate some of the best work landscape architects and professionals have been taking a lead in.